2022. This meeting is taking place remotely via Teams. So um, to all who are not regular members of the planning committee, welcome. Um, I understand we have um, a speaker and a visiting councillor as well, so welcome to you. If you are uh, not a member of the planning um, committee, please do not enter into the chat anything at all. Please, if you wish to say anything or if you wish to confirm anything, just raise your electronic hands and I'll do my best to answer whatever queries you have. If you do experience IT problems, um, you can also uh, raise your electronic hands if that's possible or perhaps dial back in um, and try the meeting again. But the Democratic Services Officers are here to help you if you have any difficulties. OK. There we are. Please, could you keep your microphones on mute unless I call on you to speak? I've mentioned not to put any debate into the chat function. That's just for uh, acknowledging difficulties and uh, keep the background noise as, as low as possible. I understand people's <laughs> homes, there's dogs and things, and we've had a few parrots as well. So um, just try and keep it as quiet as you can. Right, Tammy, uh, would you please uh, take the roll call? <clears throat> Certainly, thank you, Chair. I've marked yourself as president. Chair, it's, it's entirely up to you. But yeah, while you I'm do doing... matters of interest at the same time, Tammy. Of course, Susan, thank you. Chair. Thank you. I have no you. interests, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Uh, same questions <laughs> to Councillor Sean Percy, the Vice Chair. Uh, good morning, Councillor Percy. Do you have any declarations of interest? Good morning, Tammy. Yeah, I'm present and uh, no interest to declare. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, following voting councillors, councillor Steve Hunt. Yes, morning, Tommy. Uh, I am here this morning and I uh, would like to declare a personal interest on application 2021-0965. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. I'll send you out the declaration of interest form now following this meeting. Uh, I, Tommy, sorry, just to interrupt you. I have uh, spoken to Craig, so it's not a prejudicial interest. So I, I, I can't vote and I can't take part in the full applications. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. That's great. Thanks for that. Councillor Woolcock, are you present? And do you have any declarations of interest? Yes, I can confirm that I'm present and I have no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Renkes. Present, no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Dennis Keogh. I'm present, Tommy, um, but uh, I feel that uh, one of the objectors, uh, Mr. Wayne Morgan, I am very well known to Mr. Wayne Morgan. So uh, in case of any ambiguity, I will step out on this uh, first application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Just to confirm, I'll send you a declaration of interest form. Um, mm. And when you leave the meeting, I will call you back in for the next item of business. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you, you. Tommy. Thank you. Councillor Chris Williams, please. Present Chair, and I will be preparing an interest in item P2021-0965 on a personal basis that I know the applicant very well. So, as I say, same situation. Now, thank you, Councillor Williams. Do you feel you can vote uh, on the application or no, will you be no stepping him, out? I'm stepping out. I know him too personally. It's, uh, OK, that's great. Thank you, Councillor. I will send you a form. Wonderful. Councillor Scott Bamsey. I don't think Councillor Bamsey is present this morning. Councillor Ros Davis. Also not present. OK, Councillor Chris James. Councillor Chris James. No, not present. OK, uh, Councillor Ridian Maison. Yes, I'm present, Tommy, and I have no interest to declare. Great, thank you. <laughs> We've received apologies, Chair, from Councillor Mark Prothero. OK, okay. Uh, we also have present Councillor, uh, local ward member, Councillor Peter Richards. Uh, and also Councillor Alan Lockyer, is that correct? Councillor Lockyer doesn't seem to be present, but I 
I was aware that he was coming, so maybe that he'll be here in a while. Late, Tammy, look maybe out. late. Okay, thank <laughs> you, Ted. Okay, on to officers. Uh, Kerry Morris. Uh, present, Tammy. Thank you. Russell Borthwick. Present, thank you. Thank you. Chris Davis. Present, thank you. Thank you. Nicola Lake. Present, thank you. Thank you. Leah Morgan. Present, thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Megan Thomas. Present, thank you. Lovely, thank you. Uh, on to legal officer, we have Mike Shaw. Yes, present, Tammy, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Tammy Davis, the Democratic Services Officer for the meeting. We also have present uh, the registered speaker against application P2021-1268, Bayview Fernfield Bankland, and that's Rob Bowen. Uh, we also have uh, a couple of people in the public gallery chair. All right, OK. OK, uh, I do believe I've called everybody out who will be taking part in the meeting today. Mm -hmm. Can you let me know if I haven't at this point, please? Tammy, my colleague, Hi. Gavin White as well. Gavin, apologies, Gavin. Thank you, Mike. Hi, Tammy. Oh, hey. Hey. Thank, thank you, Mike. Thank Present, Tammy. Thank you, Gavin, and thank you, Councillor Wingrave, LDP member. Just thank you very your, much. Just your to observe, no voting capacity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very I, much. I can see Councillor Locke here also present now, Tammy. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Councillor. I will okay. add Councillor Locke here to the roll call. And I believe that's the roll <laughs> call complete there, Tammy. Tammy, um, bearing in mind the interests declared mm -hmm. and the number of apologies, could you please confirm that we will be core up for both items? Give me a moment, Chair, if that's OK. Yes, no problem. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, Mike, can you help me with this one, please? Because I believe we have six people who will be voting for the Fernfield application, mm. okay, which is 2021 slash 1268. Those will be Councillor Patterson, Councillor Percy, Councillor Steve Hunt, Councillor Arwin Woolcock, Councillor Suzanne Renkers, Councillor Chris Williams, and Councillor Ridian Maizan. Apologies, that's seven. Would that be correct, everybody? Yeah, OK, then that one is fine, Chair, the first okay, field application. For the, the gym application, 2021-0965, we have people who can vote. Councillor Suzanne Patterson, Councillor Sean Percy, Councillor Arwin Woolcock, Councillor Suzanne Renkers, Councillor Dennis Keogh will be called back in yeah. for that item. Yeah. And Councillor Ridian Maizan. That gives us six. Mike, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Tommy and myself. Oh. You left me there up we are. There. I apologise, Councillor. Of course, you have declared an interest, but you have confirmed you can speak and yes. vote on that item. So yes. we do have seven for each then. Yeah. Yes, Chair, I can confirm you call it for both. That's amazing. Uh, let's just hope we don't have any IT failures along the way then. So um, for the benefit of Mr Bowen, um, I know you've been present before. I just wanted to make sure that you understood about councillors declaring interest and also the members in the gallery. Um, if, if any councillor feels that um, they have uh, links to uh, a person applying, which may seem as if to other people as if um, they kn they know them too well, is probably advisable for them not to um, decide that item. So that's what these councillors have done. And it's just making sure that we are crystal clear in our governance and making decisions on these items. So I hope everybody understands what's happened there. OK, then we have um, um, two items to decide today, but I will go to we've got declarations of interest uh, minutes of the previous meeting. I do beg your pardon. Um, item three, um, they are to be found on pages five to eight. I will assume that you have all read the papers. Um, could I have someone to propose that they are a true record? Happy to move, Chair. Thank you. And a seconder? I'll second that, Chair. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you very much. So those are ratified. <clears throat> Item four, requests for site visits. Um, I have 
received a request in with the uh, call in, um, but we dealt with that then and we didn't go for a site visit. But obviously everybody has got the right in the planning uh, committee to call for a site visit at any time. You don't have to do it beforehand. So I haven't received any yet. Um, is there anybody at the moment who wishes to call for a site visit? No. OK, then we'll move on to the two items for decision today. They are both marked for approval by Ma officer. Madam Sorry. Chair, my apologies for interrupting you. Um, I see Councillor James may have a connectivity problem. Oh, right. OK, uh, Tammy, uh, can you check that out before we go any further? Because I don't want to go back over items. If the officers have introduced the report, um, I don't want any any councillors to miss anything. Yes, certainly, Chair. Can I confirm which which member that was, Mike? James. Councillor James, Councilor James, um, James yeah. dropped out. Dropped out, OK. <clears throat> Councillor Chris James. Apologies, everyone. This is the type of thing that happens when we have remote meetings. We have to rely on IT an awful lot. But in the interest, uh, again, of good governance, I won't proceed until he's back in. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, apologies for the interruption. No, that's fine. You carry on. <laughs> um, OK. Councillor James, are you back in the meeting? No, no. Sorry, Chair. Are we able to re-invite him into the meeting, I wonder, Tammy? I'm calling him in, Councillor. Uh, sorry, Mike, I'm calling him into the meeting. So he, he does still have the invite and the ability to attend the meeting. I'm going to just call uh, Dem Services colleague to come in. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. No problems. Being as that we are, you know, um, low on numbers, I, I, I really feel that we ought to try very hard to get the councillor back in. Yes, he's saying his internet is oh. uh, is the problem. Oh, gosh, okay. yes. If we were to proceed, are we core without Councillor James, Tammy? We are, Chair. We, six is the, the quorum for planning committee because there are 12 members. Yeah. Um, All right. So we would be six, Chair. Okay. Um, can, can you telephone him separately rather than going through the, the teams just to make sure... Uh, that we've done everything we can. If you were happy to adjourn the meeting a minute, Chair, while I step out, because uh, just, of course just, I wouldn't be present then just, for just the meeting. Just for five minutes. Is that OK, Mike? We'll just yes. adjourn, because I really want as many councillors as possible here. So uh, we we'll just have five minutes adjournment. Yes, please, Chair. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you all. I'll be oh, back that, shortly that, now. 10.18. 10.18. Thank you, Chair. OK, just to advise Democratic Services colleagues who have joined the meeting to help. Um, we're currently adjourned until 10.18. We've lost Chris, Councillor Chris James's connectivity. Um, I have tried calling him back in, but he's I, having... I'll do that one, Tam. Leave Chris James to me. Who else have, have we got falling out? That's OK at the moment. There seem to be uh, widespread issues with IT, but it's only Councillor James that is sort of halt in progress at the moment. Leave it with me. I, I sought him out. Thank you, Jane. Me. Thank you, Jane. No problem. Thank Bye. you. Mm. Councillor Hunt, you to say something? Yes, please, Chair. OK. I've, I've been dropped out three times oh. in this short period of time as well. 
and okay. I reconnected very quickly. So mm-hmm. again, I, I don't know if this is uh, anything to do with Russia, but uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, IT this morning is uh, or, or is just playing up. So apologies for that. And, and as you said, quite rightly, Chair, if we miss anything on the presentation, then mm. we're not able to vote in, in, mm. the, in the way we should anyway. So no. uh, I, I just hope, I hope my connection will remain now uh, for the item. Thank you. Okay. For, for all voted members present then, I would like to say that if you do drop out for any significant time and you feel that you've missed even as much, you know, a couple of sentences, please let Democratic Services know or myself and we shall go over that again. I mean, it's going to prolong the meeting. However, um, that's the only thing we can do at the moment, because when I come to the end, I will be asking members, have you been present throughout? And if uh, colleagues can't say, yes, I've been present throughout, um, I'm going to experience difficulties with the vote. So please just let us know, um, like Councillor Hunt, and we'll truly do our best. <laughs> yes, just as, a, as an extra point, um, Councillor, uh, sorry, Chair, yeah. Councillor Chris James, I did not count him in my initial um, who was able to vote for the okay. meetings so or for the, the items. So you, you do have eight people to vote right. for each. Okay. So if we are unable to get Councillor Chris James back, it will be very mm. disappointing. But you will still be correct and Lovely. have one extra voting member than is 100% necessary. OK, well, at 10.18, I'll have given it the five minutes. So we'll wait till then because he may be able to uh, log back in. Thank you. I am calling him, Chair, continuing yeah. to call him. Um, so I will work on this now and I will let you know whether I have been successful or not. Thank you, Jane. OK, thank you, Jane. What we'll do, Madam, as for, forgive me, Madam Chair, uh, what I was going to suggest is that between me, Gavin and Tammy, we keep an eye on members, um, uh, members. as to whether yeah. we, we do yeah. have uh, a drop out. And if that does happen, we'll we'll let you know. I appreciate uh, that this morning from any officers that can help assist uh, with IT and keep a check on on members. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Thanks. Madam Chair, thank you. It's one of them Tuesdays, isn't it? Right, apologies for that. I've actually gone and sat in the car park now, so hopefully I've got a much better signal. Oh, Councillor James. That's lovely. So you're back, yes? Yes. Oh, excellent. OK, then. Could, right. could I just confirm, Chair, apologies, now that we have Councillor Chris James present. Councillor, Councillor James, I'm just checking you don't have any declarations of interest, interest yes. for either of the items this morning. No, I have no declarations of interest for either of the items. Wonderful. Lovely. Thank you. I, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much for switching venues, Councillor. It does help. So, right. OK, we'll proceed. Um, so the first item for our decisions today, oops, my glasses back on, um, is uh, application P2021-1268, Bayview 3 Fernfield Baglan, and it is on pages 9 to 24. Um, in your bundle, but also there is um, the presentation that Mr. Morris sent around as well to be taken in conjunction. It's got the maps and um, diagrams on it uh, to go with it. So um, I could call on uh, Mr. Kerry Morris to take the committee through this report, please. Yeah, good morning all. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Um, yeah, I, I've I just just to clarify, I've also had IT problems this morning, so I'm, I'm very much fingers crossed that it'll hold up for me as well. But but we'll we'll see how things go. I don't want to tempt fate. OK, um, sorry, okay. Chair, sorry, Kerry, to interrupt. Just to let yeah. you know, Chair, we appear to be missing Councillor Dennis Keogh now at this point. Um, just just for your information, Chair, we'll try and get him back into the meeting now. I, I leave that Dennis with me. Keogh's out anyway. He's a, yes, he was. Oh, he apolo was apologies. Yeah. Yes, Chair, he has stepped out due to his interest. OK, thank okay. you. Thank you, Jane. No need to ring him. Thank you very much. Kerry Morris, then, please. No problem. Thanks, Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to share my screen. So if you could advise me of when. Uh, yes, I can see that now. When, when you can <laughs> see. Uh, OK. Bear with me a sec. OK. 
OK, well, good morning all. As, as, as the chair said, this this application is uh, P2021-1268 and it's it's the proposal um, at Bayview 3 Fernfield Baglan. Uh, and the proposal is to increase um, uh, the the property in ridge height of the existing bungalow to provide accommodation within the roof space, uh, a two story rear, rear extension with porch, plus an attached garage um, uh, to the side elevation uh, with roof terrace above and associated retaining works. So in terms of a, a, a touch on the bit of background, Councillor Renk has uh, requested that the application be um, determined at, at planning committee and that, and that request was considered at the calling panel. Um, and we agreed uh, to, to, to bring the report to committee so that uh, committee could uh, consider the, the, the effect of the proposal um, on the residential amenity of neighbouring neighboring properties, uh, particularly in respect of the potential for overlooking and overbearing impact. In terms of the site uh, and, and context, um, you'll see on the screen there just a, a Google Google Earth image, which this is the, the, the app application property here. Um, the application site comprises an existing detached bungalow known as Bay View and measures approximately 0 0.055 hectares. The site is steeply sloping in profile from the west up to the east uh, with associated retaining works uh, uh, to the adjacent highway to the western and eastern sides. This curves around site in a hairpin bend uh, and is located on a single track, uh, single track in width. The site is bounded uh, with a highway to the north, east and west and a dwelling to the south, which is number two here. There is also a dwelling located below the site, and this is this property here, uh, and that is number 26 Pentoyne Bagden Road uh, to the western side. So in terms of this description of development, uh, as I said, this the application seeks, uh, it's a full up planning application for the increase in the ridge height, of the existing bungalow, as I've said. Um, and whilst this is a is a new planning application, uh, it is very similar to the, the previously approved uh, planning application, uh, P2021-0406, which was considered um, at planning committee back, on, back in August of last year. Now, whilst the, this application will, of course, be considered on its own merits, uh, the existing live permission is considered uh, uh, is, is a material consideration as part of as part of this process. Um, and, and the impacts, of course, will need to be considered uh, in light of the existing property, but also the fallback position uh, with the scheme uh, which has already been uh, been permitted. So in terms of the this is the this is the existing site. Uh, uh, and, and the proposed um, uh, scheme uh, sitting below. Uh, that's the existing uh, ground floor uh, and existing roof plan. And that's what's being proposed, both ground floor and first floor. So in terms of the roof extension element, uh, the, proposed, the proposal is to raise the ridge height from its current height of approximately 4.6 metres to approximately 7.36 metres. Uh, and this is an increase of around 2.76 metres, and, and that, that's compared to approximately uh, 2.39 metres under the approved scheme. Uh, windows are proposed to all elevations, including roof lights uh, and a dormer to the rear. Uh, the attached garage uh, is proposed to the northern side with roof terrace above, and that will measure approximately 6.12 metres in length by 5 metres wide, and will reach a height of 3.8 metres uh, to the top of the glass balustrade in. In terms of the rear extension, that will measure a total width of approximately 9.05 metres by 3.52 metres in depth, including the porch, uh, and will reach a height of 7.47 metres. Uh, and there's, as I said, there's a cat slide dormer it is also proposed as part of that rear, rear extension. Uh, the dwelling would be finished uh, with light grey rendered walls. Um, at, at ground floor uh, with cedar timber cladding at first floor level and with dark grey artificial slates to the roof, uh, with the rear elevation being finished in face brickwork um, as uh, proposed at the ground level. Externally, uh, the rear porch would act as a rate retaining element uh, and the existing retaining walls and hedging to the front of the property would remain would remain in place. Um, the existing pedestrian access steps entrance to the front is proposed to be blocked up uh, 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 and the, the existing hedge extended uh, across the front. 
In terms of the, the consultations chair, um, uh, there's uh, from building control colleagues uh, would require design calculations for the retaining elements um, and the head of engineering and transport from both the highways and drainage perspective and indeed our contaminated land colleagues have offered no objection uh, subject to appropriate conditions. The in terms of representations received, uh, neighbouring properties were consulted uh, on the 11th of January with a site notice displayed on the same date. Uh, four, uh, four representations um, have been received um, with the nature of concerns being summarised in terms of overlooking and overbearing on the neighbouring properties. Um, the proposal constitutes um, overdevelopment of the site, uh, visual massing, poor design to the detriment of local character and quality, and also removal of trees. So in terms of the, the, the issues then, Chair, in terms of the, 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 report, the assessment, um, uh, the issues to, to be considered here are the principle of development uh, together with the impact uh, on the visual amenity of the area, the amenities of neighbouring residents and, and highway safety. So in terms of the principle of development, uh, the site is located uh, within settlement limits defined by the local development plan. So the principle of this development at this location is therefore generally acceptable, provided of course there are no overriding highway uh, amenity or indeed environmental, environmental objections. In terms of the impact on visual amenity, uh, now whilst, the public, uh, whilst the proposal would alter the appearance of uh, the existing dwelling from a, from a bungalow to a two-storey property, the proposal would have accommodation within the roof space rather than a traditional sort of full two-storey uh, dwelling. Mm. So the overall dwelling as extended would have a modern uh, attractive appearance uh, with a mixture of gable features to the front and rear and also a, a cat slide dormer and the use of render and cedar cladding I think would further add uh, to the modern appearance. So in light of in light of this assessment um, and having regard to the scheme already approved, um, it is considered that overall the proposal would not have any detrimental impact upon the character uh, and appearance of the surrounding street scene. Moving on to um, the impact on residential amenity, uh, residential amenity, mm. uh, the, the, the in terms of potential for overlooking, um, due to the position of the application dwelling relative to the surrounding properties. Uh, the only windows and areas that would have the potential to create overlooking issues face the southern and, and, and western boundaries. Um, the, on, on the southern elevation, and this, this face is number two, um, these would serve, the windows on this, this elevation would serve a, a kitchen at ground floor and a bathroom roof light at the first floor level and would have a separation distance of around 20 to 21 metres to the neighbouring property. And on this basis, Chair, uh, this element would not be considered to create any unacceptable uh, overlooking issues. In terms of the windows to the western elevation, and that faces uh, uh, number 26 uh, below, um, it's noted that there are three existing windows to the eastern elevation of number 26 facing the road, uh, two of which are, are obscurely glazed, uh, but one is clear glazing, so there is some potential for overlooking. Um, number 26, um, however, is located uh, below uh, the level of the road, uh, and there is already a degree of overlooking from the existing dwelling, albeit uh, the, the primary views from, from the application property would largely extend over the roof of the dwelling below uh, number 26. Uh, the owners of number 26 have also recently constructed a fence to block any views, um, indeed from the road or indeed potentially from the application site. So given the change in levels, uh, the fact that there is an intervening highway, uh, and the respective angles uh, of the uh, of of the adjacent properties, and also the existing hedge to the front of number three, uh, this would ensure that there wouldn't be any unacceptable um, overlooking to the windows of number twenty six. As far as the roof terrace goes, uh, which is which is located above uh, the new garage, uh, this has the potential for overlooking to the garden of of number twenty six. But again, there is significant changes in levels uh, between the properties. Uh, to, to the degree of approximately five metres. Um, there is also a parking area and fencing on the boundary of number 26, uh, which the amenity area uh, which is located um, below that parking area. Uh, there is also a separation distance from the top of the glass railings above the roof terrace uh, to the rear wall of the parking area of approximately 13 metres. 
So as such, with 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 these factors considered in mind, um, again, as a consequence of, of what's been uh, outlined, uh, this would be considered to ensure that there wouldn't be any unacceptable overlooking issues uh, to the number 26 below. Um, the report does note, Chair, that the existing fence of number 20, 26 uh, could be removed uh, in future, but this would, however, mean that the amenity area would, non, would no longer then remain private as it would be visible uh, from pedestrians and vehicles using the access road, which serves the properties uh, along Fernfield. So in terms of uh, the windows from the bedrooms, um, wind, uh, uh, bedrooms one and two uh, would be obscurely glazed. Uh, preventing any unacceptable overlooking issues into the amenity area, while the landing area would also have a void in front uh, and is non-habitable, uh, so would not in itself create uh, any unacceptable overlooking issues. Uh, bedroom three, uh, which is uh, towards the southern elevation, um, it's noted that this would have French doors with glazed uh, a Juliet balcony railings to the front. Um, as this is a railing only and, and, and not a full balcony area, it's considered that this would not create any unacceptable overlooking issues uh, beyond that of, of, of a window, um, especially as, as the patio sort of amenity area to number 26 would be approximately 17 to 18 metres away, also at an angle of, of approximately 30 degrees. Um, it's, it's probably worth noting as well, Chair, that, that bedrooms three and four on the previous scheme were not required or conditioned to be fitted with obscure glazing, um, and the scheme now proposed wouldn't create any additional uh, overlooking over and above that of, of the scheme that's already been uh, already been uh, approved. Um, in terms of potential overbearing and overshadowing, um, it is noted that there is a change in levels, as I said, between the application site and number 26. Um, so again, the dwelling as proposed would not create any unacceptable overbearing or overshadowing issues to such a degree that would warrant um, a refusal of the application. Uh, again, this is especially the case given the relationship between the two properties, the changes in levels, the intervening highway, uh, and the retaining works and boundary treatments. So, although uh, the, the ridge height is of the current scheme would be slightly higher than what's been previously approved uh, by uh, approximately 0.37 meters, the overall length and, and, and therefore massing um, of the proposal has reduced. Uh, from approximately 29.18 metres to 26.26 metres, which equates to a reduction of around uh, 2.92 metres. So in summary, Chair, in terms of uh, uh, this, this uh, impact on residential amenity, um, the proposal would not be considered to have any unacceptable or detrimental impact upon the neighbouring properties in terms of overlooking, overbearing, or indeed overshadowing. Uh, and the revised scheme uh, would not have any adverse impacts over and above the scheme that is previously approved. As I said, Chair, that would warrant or justify uh, refusal of the application. So in terms of the uh, the presentation, Chair, there are some sections provided which show uh, the relationship between uh, the the uh, the application property and indeed uh, number 26, which sits below. Um, and those are there uh, within within the presentation for members to, to, to have a look at. Um, moving on to parking and access requirements uh, and the impact on highway safety. Um, that image there shows shows the um, uh, the access up, up to the properties in Fernfield. Now the proposal itself will provide and retain three parking spaces um, on the driveway area, driveway area and garage, uh, and as such would be considered acceptable in terms of parking provision. Um, in regard. Uh, to uh, the highway section has uh, obviously assessed the proposal. They have offered no no objections, Chair, to the development subject to, to conditions, which would include the submission of a detailed construction method statement, uh, drainage details, highway condition survey, um, and as I said, there are uh, requirements for detailed structural calculations as well. So provided these are, these are imposed, um, it's therefore considered that the proposal would not have any detrimental impact on in terms of highway um, and pedestrian safety. Again, those are the, the images of, of uh, the access road as is. In terms of contaminated land, very briefly, um, uh, the, the application has been considered by, by, by our uh, contaminated land colleagues. Um, uh, the contaminated land unit have offered no objection uh, to the proposal subject to um, uh, suitably worded conditions. 
uh, but it's considered that the existing and future users of the site would not be adversely affected uh, by any ground contamination. So in terms of um, other matters um, that haven't necessarily been addressed as part of uh, part of the, the report assessment, um, in terms of the overdevelopment of the site, um, the total site area, uh, as reference chair, was was 0 0.055 hectares, mm -hmm. um, which is 555 meters squared. Um, now, as uh, and the dwelling as extended would have a footprint of approximately 157.6 meters squared. Now, this means that there's an approximately 397 meters squared of land and garden area remaining on the application site. And as a consequence, um, it is not considered, therefore, that, that this particular proposal uh, results in the overdevelopment of the site. Uh, in terms of the rear dormer, um, the, the, the dormer, uh, it's on the rear of the property and, and wouldn't be considered an incongruous uh, addition to the property. Uh, and the use of timber cladding would remain, uh, would mean it would integrate with the, the other elements of, um, of the property. So again, no unacceptable impact in terms of visual amenity. Um, there is reference chair to the removal of trees. Uh, and although this is noted, uh, this would not be a reason to refuse uh, uh, this application. Um, furthermore, under this scheme, the existing hedge to the front of the property is proposed to be retained um, in the interest of visual amenity and indeed biodiversity. Um, as far as compliance with policy BE1 design goes, uh, this scheme, uh, as well as the previous one, uh, complies with, with, with the policy and is acceptable in terms of visual um, and residential amenity. Um, uh, as far as the garage and roof terrace go, uh, there's an issue raised in terms of uh, the extending beyond the principal um, elevation uh, not being allowed. Uh, but to clarify for members, this refers to what can be undertaken under, under permitted development uh, without the need for planning permission. Um, so it does not preclude anyone applying for or indeed being granted permission uh, for such for such a development. Uh, and lastly, Chair, in terms of obscure glazing, uh, the last application had obscure glazing to the front uh, uh, not to the Juliet balcony. So not all of the first floor windows to the front elevation were required to be obscurely glazed on the previous scheme. Uh, and it was only the slotted windows serving bedroom one uh, and the window below the eaves serving bedroom two that were required and conditioned uh, previously to be fitted with obscure glazing. So with all that assessment in mind, Chair, uh, the conclusion of the report is that the proposed development would not have any uh, detrimental impact on the residential amenity or upon the character and appearance of the surrounding area and countryside, and there would be no adverse impact in terms of uh, highway or pedestrian safety. So accordingly, uh, the development does, as proposed, uh, is in accordance with uh, policies SC1, EN8, TR2 and BE1 of, of the Local Development Plan, uh, with the recommendation, Chair, is, is, is to approve subject to suitably worded conditions. Thank you, Chair. There are, there are some additional um, uh, images uh, which, which I'm sure, is part of the, the debate we can, we can, um, we can consider uh, going forward. Um, uh, Mr. Bowen has provided three particular images from from the eject from the ejector side, which we were happy to include in in the presentation. And these um, show the relationship between uh, the the application property and indeed number 26, which sits below below the site. But as I said, I can I can bring this um, presentation back up as part of as part of any debate, Chair. Thank you. That's fine. Thank, Thank you very you much, much, Mr. Morris. That that's lovely. Okay, so we've had the uh, the uh, application um, details explained. What happens now is that I will call on the speaker that is registered, uh, which is Mr. Robert Bowen. Um, we have not had uh, any uh, indication that somebody wishes to speak on behalf of the application, although that is allowed, but we haven't had anybody come forward. So just to for, for clarity, uh, we will be hearing from Mr Bowen, but nobody else from the other side came forward. They're relying on their application. Um, after Mr Bowen, I will uh, be going to the local member who is on the planning committee, and that would be Councillor Renkis, who actually did the call in. So, Mr Bowen, um, you will have five minutes to address committee, tell them exactly how you feel about this application and your reasons. And Tammy will let you know when there's one minute left. Uh, it can come as a bit of an intrusion, but at least you know you've only got one minute left. So, Mr Bowen, in your own time, you have five minutes. 
Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, just checking that you can hear me clearly now. Yes, we can. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Can I, first of all, offer my congratulations to, to Chris, who's been appointed as Development Control Manager, and uh, also to Russ, who I understand is uh, moving on. Thank you, Chair. Um, my client, uh, Kelly Andrews and uh, Wayne Morgan, live at the property uh, beneath the application site, and their objection relates to uh, overbearing and overlooking from this particular proposal, particularly in relation to the loss of privacy from overlooking in relation to the, the rear, the, 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 the currently wholly private rear garden. In terms of the previous application, uh, might I respectfully uh, remind members that whilst the previous application is material, and I'm sure Mr Shaw will we'll direct accordingly. Members are entitled to take a different view in this particular application. They are not bound by the previous decision. And I believe the photographs that uh, will demonstrate overlooking will be highly persuasive in that regard. So for, so far as my client's property is concerned, uh, it is at its narrowest point only 7.5 meters away from the property on the application site. Uh, the dwelling on the application site to the centre of my client's garden is only 12 meters away. To the far western boundary it is only 17 meters away and the relationship between the balcony area to the north and my client's patio doors is only 18 meters. Now, officers have accepted that there is a potential for overlooking, but they conclude that the degree of overlooking does not lead to a de an overall detrimental loss of privacy. My client feels that that is not the case, as currently there is no overlooking at all to his rear garden, and the level of overlooking will indeed be unacceptable. In terms of the photographs provided uh, in, in the presentation, I don't know whether they are available, uh, Kerry, please. In terms of photographs... Sorry, Rob, I'll, I'll, I'll bring them up now in a sec. That's fine. In terms of photograph one, that is taken from the midpoint of my client's garden. And as you can see, what you will notice is the unauthorised fence, the gutters, eaves, ridge line on the application site. Now, by way of perspective, um, I would put to members that the eye line from the raised balcony into my client's property will be at the existing ridge line that you can see there. So anybody standing on that balcony will have a direct line of sight into my client's garden. Now, in terms of the fence, um, whilst that is unauthorised and can be removed, it should be noted that um, its retention, as it is not within the application site, is not within the remit of the council. In other words, uh, it cannot be conditioned to be retained. And whilst it was suggested that its removal would result in additional views from the highway and passers-by. I, I would suggest that that is a fairly limited amount of loss of privacy, resulting from, it, remaining. Re resulting from its removal. Given that there aren't many um, properties serving that site. Um, if you could have a look at the next photograph, please, Kerry. As you can see, that is taken outside the, the window of my client's um, dining room. And as you can see, there will be a substantial overlooking from that point. So contrary to officer's view, uh, my client maintains that this proposal will, will provide significant overlooking and a significant loss of privacy into my client's rear garden. And therefore, members are respectfully requested to um, refuse the application. And if there is some question in their mind, then there is an invitation from my client to view the proposal from his rear garden. Thank you, Chair.
Oh, thank you very much, Mr Bowen. Eloquently put, yes. OK, so I'm going to go back to uh, Mr Morris. Um, is, is there anything that Mr Bowen has said that you wish to um, come back on? Uh, not not in overly detail right. other than to say what I've what I've already covered in terms of my summary of the report chair. OK, uh, and uh, Mr Bowen didn't actually uh, qu give any questions for officers to ask answer. So um, thank you, Mr Bowen. We'll we'll move on now then. So um, I'm going to um, go to the local member, um, Councillor Renkis, Suzanne Renkis, who was the person who actually called the application to committee. So, um, Councillor Rankis. Thank you. Um, you, yes, do, you are not bound by the five minute rule. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, I called this in for uh, similar to the previous application. I, I appreciate this is a new application, but because of my concerns of overlooking um, mm -hmm. of the, particularly the property in number 26, Pentoin, um, it's quite difficult to see from the, the photographs because it, not only are the, are the, the buildings quite close, but there's, a, there's quite a substantial difference in level. And I think that's what, why the concerns of overlooking are so strong. Um, I mean, <coughs> they've, they've had to build uh, or they've had to put erect a fence already, and that's before any building has been done. Um, and I think there is, you know, there are concerns about a lack of privacy, looking into a bedroom and then also into the garden. Um, I don't really need to add much more. I would only be repeating, to be honest, what Mr Bowen so eloquently put. But those, you know, my concerns are very similar to those of Mr Bowen. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I can see that um, another local member, not a member of the um, planning committee, has his hand up. He, he's he been invite, invited to come today because he's the local member as well. Councillor uh, Peter Richards, uh, would you like to say anything? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I didn't say I was going to speak, but thank no, you for thank you. giving me the opportunity to speak and, and thank you for allowing me to attend this morning. I just wanted to, this application and the previous application was granted um, purely on theory and calculation. Um, I, and I've got concerns around that because knowing the location um, very, very well, the access and the top topography of the location, I would have thought, um, and I know it's, it's, it's past that um, members would have been given the opportunity to view that location because whether they were familiar with it at the first um, application, which I understand was passed, but I, uh, but I do know that um, my colleague, um, Suzanne Renk, Councillor Suzanne Renkes, did approach the chair uh, for a potential site visit. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we're in a situation here where if this was to be declined, this um, application were to be declined, then it would revert back to the other application that, that, that was passed. And I totally understand that. But the concerns I've got here, as the um, client, uh, uh, Mr Bowen said, there is an increase in ridge heights from the original application, you know, and that goes without saying, although we can say that it's not as not as bad as we think it is, it's definitely an increase to the ridge heights. So I would like the committee to take that into consideration. Um, please, Chair. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Councillor Richards. Um, I do believe, uh, Tammy, um, in the previous application, if I remember correctly, did somebody call for a site visit and that we had a vote on it in the committee? Yes, Chair, you're correct. Yes. So, um, Councillor Richards, obviously you weren't on the committee, so you wouldn't have been aware of that. Um, you, We did ask the committee opinion as to whether they felt a site visit on that occasion um, would have been necessary and it was declined. They felt that they could um, uh, determine the application on the basis of the information that was before them at the time. So um, that's how we determined that one. Mr Bowen is correct. We are not bound uh, by any previous applications. Members of this committee may look at this application afresh and um, and and determine what they what they feel is the correct course of action. Um, so. I'm going to open it up now that the local member has spoken and the um, objector has spoken. So I have two hands up already. Uh, Councillor Mizen, please. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, just for clarification, um, who constructed the wooden fence? Who put it up? Is it the applicant or, or, or Mr Bowen's client? I believe the wooden fence is on the property of 26. So, um, Mr Morris, could you confirm that? Yes, that's correct, Chair. It, the, 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 the unauthorised uh, fence was, was erected um, on the boundary of number 26. So it, it, is, it is not part of the application site. Thank you, Chair. Are you OK with that, Councillor Meisen, that answer? Yeah, no, I just <laughs> not really. So it's on the bone. It's on number twenty six. But did number twenty six put it up, or did? Yes. Yeah, but right, okay. So yes. okay. So I'm, I'm clear now. Okay, it, it it can be confusing sometimes. Yes, and I and no problem with anybody who wants clarification points. Um, so I'll move on to Councillor Hunt, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um. I agree that this application is taken today on its merits and mm. we mustn't look back at the previous, but I voted against the application at the previous meeting and my opinion of overlooking has not changed. Mm -hmm. I still believe it's an issue with this application here today and I will be certainly voting against this application once more. Uh, I want to ask Kerry something in relationship to overlooking or overbearing and, and and this is the grey area of course it's a choice for members today how they see what the applicants and the the objectors have put forward but we carry used a lot of not overlooking not overbearing uh, there is overlooking uh, how or what is <laughs> determines because what i'm getting at chair is that there was no overlooking, according to uh, the representative, uh, Mr Bowen, previously. Yes, I know it was passed in the last meeting and they can revert back to it, as, as the other local member mentioned. But as I said, as far as I am concerned, I voted at that time against that application also. So I still am unsure of policy when it comes to overlooking, is it an opinion, uh, Kerry? Is it actually an opinion of those who sit and vote at planning committees? And, and I would ask that in, in light of Welsh policy and Welsh planning, uh, because uh, it, advice needs to be given sometimes, Chair, or, or how to read a policy if that's the case, because Kerry did say, and I'm sorry to repeat, there is overlooking. Uh, he said it three times that there's overlooking, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's at the detriment of that property. And so I would reiterate and tell members that if there was no overlooking prior and there is overlooking now, then that is at the detriment of this particular property. So that that's just my little uh, few words, Chair, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Oh, that, you're very welcome. You you are a member of the committee, Councillor. Um, Kerry, could you uh, clarify any of those points raised by Councillor Hunt? Yes, happy to chair. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think uh, the points that you know Councillor Hunt raises is is absolutely important and, and should very much be part of this this discussion. I think I I, I think the in terms of my summary of of the report, I, I think we I did acknowledge the fact that. There is already, because of the, the 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 nature of the land, the slope, there is already a degree of overlooking. In terms of um, what what I what I referred to, perhaps on a number of occasions, what is that that the the additional overlooking would not be unacceptable. I think is is perhaps what I was 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 attempting to clarify. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when when considering what is uh, acceptable or otherwise, you know, you have to look at you know the existing relationship between the two properties. Um, and, and the report, you know, quite rightly outlines, you know, the change in levels, the fact that there's an intervening highway already, uh, and, and the respective angles of the property um, properties um, in, in question. Um, in terms of policy, um, you know, there's nothing specific in terms of policy terms in terms of overlooking of overbearing, but the policy issue, of course, is the potential impact on on residential amenity, which which considers all of these elements that we're discussing here this morning. Uh, and, and that is very much part and parcel of uh, policy BE1, which is the design policy within uh, within the local development plan. Um, but perhaps just just to reiterate again, Chair, I mean, I think the four, you know, uh, Councillor Councillor Richards um, quite rightly outlined the fallback position um, of of the determination of this 
this application this morning would be the already approved scheme. If members ultimately decided to refuse this particular application, the fallback position would be the already approved scheme uh, that that planning committee considered uh, back in August of last year. And as I've touched on in terms of the summary, you know, the ridge height of this particular scheme would only be slightly higher than that of the already approved scheme uh, to, to the to, I think of 37 centimetres in total um, and the overall length uh, and, and therefore massing of this particular uh, proposal would also be reduced by almost three metres. So, you know, arguably in, in certain instances that this, this scheme is actually an improvement of the, the existing already improved scheme. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Morris. So uh, in effect, Can I Come back to you. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll back come back to you, you Councillor Hunt, no problem. Um, uh, so the di what you've actually said there is, is the difference between this application and the previously agreed application. We would be looking at that, the difference and whether or not that was considered to be overbearing or overlooking. Yeah. OK, I just wanted to clarify because um, it, it, it can be difficult for members on the committee uh, to wade through this. So Councillor Hunt, come back, please. Yeah, very briefly then, uh, as I said, I believe there was overbearing and overlooking previously, so uh, it's not with reference to me, but as you quite rightly said, it was passed by the committee. So yes, uh, the fallback position, as Kerry outlined, is correct. I, I just, last thing on that, the Julian Bank bal balcony, sorry, I get my, put my teeth back in, Chair. Um, yeah. uh, was it, it, forgive me, did you mention that there were, frosted glass on the, the doors of the Julian balcony, because the, the point I'm making then from the Julian bank balcony, it's it, that's there for a purpose. You go out and enjoy your Julian balcony. So it, once you're standing on the balcony, you're over, overlooking the properties. It, 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 wouldn't that be the case in, in this application? Uh, hence why the Julian balcony is there, to stand there and look at the beautiful scenery but therefore you would be overlooking the properties from the Julian balcony. Is that correct, Mr. Morris? I'll go back to Mr. Morris for reply on that one. Yeah, there's, there's in terms of the proposed scheme which members are considering this morning, there's there's no obscure glazing proposed in that Juliet balcony of uh, um, of bedroom three. Um, but as I as I perhaps attempted to clarify in my summary, uh, that that was uh, not conditioned either in terms of the the the, the, the last application or the approved application. So um, I, I think uh, I think just to, re to reiterate um, that that point of of the proposed uh, uh, sort of uh, scheme is uh, 17 to 18 meters away from the the garden and sort of patio area, also at an angle of about 30 degrees. So it's there wouldn't be any direct overlooking that would that would result in 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 officers considering it to be unacceptable. Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, Councillor Hunt. Before I go on to Councillor Wilcock, are you happy with that reply? Yes, thank you, Chair. Okay, all right then. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wilcock. Being patient, I uh, call on you now. No, no, no problem, Chair. Thanks very much for your indulgence. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I think the difficulty that we've got here is is what Mr. Morris has described as the fallback situation, really, uh, Chair, uh, and, and the, the negligible uh, increase in, in that height. Mm. However, if I may, with your indulgence, ask, ask Mr. Morris a question, please, with regard to the obscure glazing. Mm -hmm. Obscure glazing, of course, uh, is effective when the windows are closed. What is what is the officer's opinion uh, of uh, of the possibility of overlooking when the windows are, are open? I, I'm happy to come back, Chair, and, and perhaps you know, you. I, I, I can I, I can also uh, bring in at this point, if if if, if possible, the, the the case officer who might have also have um, a, a view in this. In I, th I think that might be beneficial, Mr. Morris, and I know um, you are here to present the case. But if we have the case officer who has been dealing with this, I'm sure that the committee would um, benefit from uh, their their information. Yeah. Uh, I, I Hello. Think Go on, Russ, if you could come yeah. in. Mr. Thanks. Borthwick, yes. Hello. Um, well, yes, just to confirm on the obscure glazing side of things, it's it's the, it's the master bedroom which is conditioned to be obscure and the, the second bedroom next to it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the wording of the obscure glazing condition, it covers the opening aspect of it at any part over 1.7 metres. Um, it needs to be a high level opening. 
Um, so that's covered in the condition. So um, if you refer back to the, the exact wording in the condition, it specifies about it's the high level element that needs to be the open inside. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Baldwin. Um, uh, Councillor Wilcock, does that answer your question about opening of windows? It has to be a high, a high uh, opening. Yeah, that, that, that's fine, Chair. Thanks. OK. Thank you. Um, anybody else wishing to raise any questions or comments at this stage from the committee? No. Oh, who's that? Oh, a vice chair, Councillor Sean Percy. Yeah, no, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, obviously been, been listening to the discussion with, with interest again today. Um, mm -hmm. It's unusual for us to sort of get two similar applications I know. to the same site <laughs> uh, quite so close together. Um, so the last debate is also fresh in my mind of some of these issues, but um, mm. I, I've um, obviously we have been discussing some of the differences or similarities in relation to that, that fallback position. Mm. Um, and it seems that perhaps one of the contentious issues in terms of overlooking is is the, the balcony itself. And I just wondered if officers could clarify in terms of the positioning and sighting of the, the, the balcony area off that main bedroom how that relates to the fallback position. Um, I have looked at the two and they look to be in the same position, but I wasn't entirely sure um, because I know the mass and as Kerry said of the property is, has changed in this proposal. So I, I appreciate some clarity on that. Would it be beneficial to go back again to uh, the case officer there, Mr Morris? Yeah, I think so, Chair. Thank you. Yeah. Mr Borthwick? Hello. Um, just to clarify, yes, the, the the previous scheme, the house was wider, so therefore the 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 garage and the the roof terrace above was further over, so further north, then so to speak. So the 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 new scheme, the house is actually narrower. So there's they've taken out um, a section of the house and and therefore in the um, in effect moved the garage further south. Um, in so that the, the, the overall uh, width of the house is, is smaller and therefore the garage has moved, but it, it would still be in front of, of their parking area and their garden area, so to speak. So it's, I don't think it's made it any worse. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Borthwick. Just stand by in case there's more questions. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sean Percy, Vice Chair, are you happy with that response? Yeah, no, no, thanks, thanks, Jay. Yeah, no, that, that okay. that's uh, that's clear. And um, yeah, I've been studying some of those section cuts yeah. to try and understand that that impact from that viewing yeah. point. Um, because I think um, it, uh, Robert sort of uh, pointed out um and and referenced the photograph from the garden and the ridge height. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the I'm trying to understand the relationship. The, the balcony isn't in that spot. It's actually further further away from those patio doors near the parking area. So I, so I was trying to kind of understand, um, you know, the relationship between where the balcony would be and where some of the concerns all around overlooking are. OK, thank you. Yeah, it, it, it is very often the case and, and I'm very grateful to the case officer for actually coming to committee because sometimes we just get the development manager and they haven't actually dealt with it personally. But it's very um, beneficial sometimes to have the actual case officer who's worked on it for weeks um, to be in committee to answer questions. So that's fine. So basically, in summing up here, I think, um, members, we have had a similar application on this site. Um, you will, And it wasn't that long ago. Um, you will remember all the um, queries that came forward at that time. Officers have looked at this application fresh as they always do and have recommended approval that Mr Morris has gone over his um his validation of that of those assessments basically to us why they believe that yes there is um there is overlooking but it's not in their opinion um, a damaging effect of overlooking and we have to take into account what is the fallback position and the difference between that fallback position, which has already been agreed, and the difference that is made on this application, which is not, it's not an awful lot of difference in the ridge height and the overlooking. So um, if anybody wishes to say anything further at this point, local member, sometimes I come back to you at the end. 
Uh, I can see the legal officer, Mike Shaw, wants to come in. Um, Mr. Uh, Councillor Rankis, do you have anything further to add? No, thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, Mr. Mike Shaw, legal officer. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, and thank you to all the speakers who have spoken today. Um, I've only got one question, if I may, Madam Chair. OK. And that would be to, to Kerry. Um, taking into account what you have heard, uh, Mr. Morris, um, from Mr. Bowen and also from Councillor Rankes and, of course, from Councillor Richards, would your recommendation change in any way or would it remain the same or would you have changed your view in respect to the recommendation in any way? Uh, my view has not changed in terms of the the, the debate that's gone on this morning. Um, uh, as I said, the the, the, the recommendation is, is approval subject to appropriately worded conditions uh, and, and, and that, that remains the position. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you both. Thank you, Madam Chair. OK, um, this is this is the tricky um, point that, that we, we are in as councillors. I've acceded to the request for it to be deemed decided at um, committee. If if that were not approved, this would already be approved because officers feel that um, it should be approved. The fact that it's here today uh, gives members of the committee um, a way in to sort of look at it and discuss it. It's it's all down to your decisions now. You've heard the recommendations from Mr. Morris. Um, he feels that um, there would be no change after the debate to his opinion. Therefore, um, if nobody wishes to st say anything further, I will take the committee to the recommendations which are on page 18 of this report, which is to approve with conditions. There are number 17 uh, conditions that need to be taken into account with the recommendation. Uh, could I call for somebody to approve or um, move the application? I move, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Meisen. Um, seconded. Yeah, I'm happy to second, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Wilcock. Um, Kerry, um, Tammy, sorry. Um, would you please now take the members, voting members, um, through the roll call again, asking have they been present throughout and which way they wish to vote? Yes, so Denise Chair. Okay. Just, just for everybody's clarity, these will just be the members who are able to vote on this application. Right. Yes. OK, thank you. So I'll start with yourself, Chair. Councillor Suzanne Patterson, have you been present for this whole item and how do you wish to vote? Yes, I have been present throughout, even though I did turn my camera off because I was coughing um, and I wish to vote for the recommendation. Thank you. Same questions to the other voting members, starting with Councillor Sean Percy. Thanks, Tammy. Yeah, I've been present throughout the meeting and um, taking into account the, the discussion and uh, presentation today. Um, I'll be uh, happy to vote for the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Steve Hunt, please. Yes, Tammy, I've been here for the whole presentation item and I'll be voting against the application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Alwyn Wilcock. Yes, Chair, I confirm that I've been present for the whole agenda item, voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Suzanne Renkes. I've been present for the whole item and I vote against. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Chris Williams. Thank you, Chair. I confirm that I've been present for the whole meeting and I'm re voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Ridian Maisan. Uh, I can confirm that I've been present for the whole item, Tommy, and I will be voting for the recommendation. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Chris James, please. Confirm I've been present for the whole item, Tommy, and I'm voting against the recommendation. Thank you. Chair, just to confirm, uh, five have voted for, three against. The application has been approved. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, would you now please... Um, Re ask um, Councillor Keogh to come back into the meeting it and um, we'll then go on to the next item. And I do understand somebody else is going to drop out, but we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, I think Councillor Forgive me. I'm sorry, Mike. Go on. 
No, I, I believe Councillor Williams was going to step out. For yes, I, yes, yeah. I can step it out now. Okay, I'll step. Oh, out. that's very that's that's good. Uh, there's no there's no need to come back in, Councillor Williams. So if you feel you just wish to leave, that is the second item. So um, you may, but there is the delegated um, items that we need to go through. As long as you haven't got any problems with that, you you can just leave. It's just to confirm, uh -huh. we have Councillor Dennis Keogh back in the meeting. Welcome back, Councillor Keogh. We've decided that item, so we're moving on. And Councillor Chris Williams has now left for this item, Chair. OK, Mr Bowen, you're perfectly welcome to stay, but I believe that, you know, your interest is at an end now. So it's entirely up to you whether you stay or go. No, I'll take the opportunity to leave. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, OK, I understand. I Thank you very much to officers and members again. Very much appreciated. Take care. Very kind. Thank you. Bye-bye. OK, so we'll just wait until we've stabilised on who should be here right now. We've got everybody back now, Tan. Yes, Chair, everyone okay. who should be present is present. <laughs> Let's move on before that changes. OK, uh, just a sec, and I'm sorry, I'm on paper. Um, Right, we move on now then to agenda item six, which is the second item for decision today. Um, this is application P2021-0965, a variation of conditions one, three and four of the plan of permission uh, P2019-5650. Um, I'm going to leave it there because it's all in front of you there. Nobody wants to hear me read out the whole thing. And I'm sure officers will um, clarify the position as we go through. At this point, I wish to um, welcome uh, Officer Chris Davis, who is now has had promotion and um, somebody beat me to it earlier on in the meeting, but I wish to congratulate him on his promotion um, to management control officer and welcome him to his first um, committee meeting to go through this report for the members. So can I call on Mr Davis, please? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, yeah, this is planning application uh, 2021-0965 for the variation of conditions one, three and four of planning permission P2019-5650 to allow for the permanent consent, a change of opening times, um, and to allow the playing of amplified music in accordance with the noise assessment as submitted. Uh, the location of the property is Unit 9 Jim Key Road, which you can see on the site plan uh, enclosed. It's a bit of a, a boring presentation, I'm afraid. That's it, I think. I have got any nice photos for this one. Um, this application is reported to the planning committee basically due to ongoing enforcement complaints regarding uh, breach of conditions at the site, and it was felt mm -hmm. prudent to um, determine this at this level due to those ongoing issues. Um, members would be aware from the report that um, the site originally had planning permission back in 2017, mm -hmm. and that was granted a temporary consent for two years. Um, a subsequent extension of time application was then submitted in 2019, and that runs until January 2023. So this application is obviously to um, now apply for a permanent planning permission for the use, which has operated all that time. Obviously, there was a, um, a time during lockdown when obviously the, the premises was closed, um, but we've received um, ongoing complaints regarding the breach of conditions in terms of hours, um, and as I said, issues in terms of um, the playing of amplified music as well from the property. So we've, um, if you note um, within the report, um, you'll see that the applicant um, wants to apply to obviously vary um, condition three to extend their open hours to 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday to Friday, uh, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on a Saturday and 8 till 3 on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Now for us to consider whether or not we can look at a permanent planning permission um, and to allow any flexibility in the opening hours. The applicant has, um, through negotiation with our enforcement section, um, submitted a noise assessment. And in part of that noise assessment report, 
the applicant has um, set out certain measures that they wish to put in place to address the issues that we've had um, over the uh, preceding period of operation to address those concerns. Mm -hmm. So in terms of representations, obviously we've consulted um, neighbouring properties by letter and through site notice. Um, we've received multiple representations uh, from um, an individual property over a sustained period um, regarding unknown issues, um, basically from inter intermittent disturbance with noise and vibration due to the playing of music um, and the resulting impact of that on health and well-being and their, their residential amenity. Uh, members be aware there's an amendment sheet on this item as well. We've received a late representation from Neath Town Council, basically reiterating the same uh, objection in relation to noise. Um, the, in terms of the relevant policies, those are obviously set out in the plan uh, in the report. Um, we've got um, BE1, which relates um, obviously to amenity. Um, and we've got um, the relevant one here is EN8 in relation to pollution and land stability, which covers noise pollution as part mm -hmm. of that, um, about that policy. So there's 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 two main issues here. One is obviously the permanent permission. Um, part of the assessment within the report, as you'll see, looks at um, the reason why it was obviously granted temporary consent originally. Mm -hmm. um, this was a use that was a non-conforming use in terms of an employment use within that existing area because it was an, in a previous employment use. Um, the consideration at that time is the building had been vacant for some time, started to fall mm -hmm. into disrepair, and that this would provide a ancillary use in that area, but mm -hmm. not necessarily po policy compliant at that time. Uh, since that time, obviously, the, prop the building has been in operation. Um, it survived, obviously, the closure during lockdown. Um, the applicants obviously invested quite a lot of money into the into the site, um, and it's set out in the report there. Um, obviously, it employs uh, eight full time and seven part time workers, which does actually create employment within the area. And in terms of its location and proximity to the sound centre, it is accessible by foot, cycle, and public transport. So, in terms of its um, its long term retention there. Um, we think in terms of um, its current position that it is it is necessarily then in compliance with with that overarching employment policy. Um, turning to the issue of the noise and disturbance, obviously there's um, the report sets out uh, measures that have been discussed with the applicant over the preceding enforcement um, case. Um, there's been a number of site visits undertaken. Um, the applicant has employed a consultant to deal with this now on his behalf, which has now led to obviously this the report that's appended to this application and support in the documentation. So um, a noise limiter has now been installed within the audio within the audio system within the gym, and that is set at specific levels, which means that at the noise level, as that can be heard from the nearest noise sensitive property, which what you'll see in the report is there's a plan there which shows that that's approximately 110 metres away located on Bridge Street. Um, the sur other surrounding properties obviously in commercial use. So the noise limit has been put in place. There's relevant conditions in terms of um, a package of conditions that address the noise from that property um, and including um, if members look at the, the conditions, you'll see that um, We've set out the hours of operation, the noise limiter and the sets of levels that have been agreed with environmental health to ensure that the, the noise um, cannot be um, an amenity issue from the residential property. Um, there's conditions there requiring the noise limiter to retain in place. And there's also a um, condition five, which requires verification of these noise levels within three months where um, and a revised assessment in the normal day to day operation of the gym will be taking place to ensure that if any changes are required, that we have that second opportunity to look at that again. Um, there were also issues in terms of the operation ongoing um, where activities were taking place in the car park um, and there's also a condition that restricts that as well. So based on all of those conditions and the view from environmental health officers that this would address the issue in terms of uh, impacts on amenity. 
um, we're recommending approval subject to those conditions. Um, and that we think that based on that, that it would be um, in compliance with the relevant policies that are set out within the local plan. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, something went went off on my distracted me just for a moment then. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. OK, um, we do um, have um, a local member present as a visitor today. So, uh, Councillor Lockyer, would you like to address committee on this item? Yes, thank you, Chair. Can I, can I thank you for allowing me to come to your committee today to, yeah. to make representation? Thanks. Um, I think Miss Brinkworth couldn't be here today, but she's sent a letter in to, uh, to you, and hopefully the committee can read that to save time, really, so to save up the, the five minutes you would have. OK, well, look, noise nooses. This is, this is the crux of the complaint. It's not that uh, anybody wants the gym to shut, no. but the noise levels uh, uh, well, they've always been the headline. A string of high-profile court cases uh, are often seen in the in the news with uh, neighbours who complain about loud or continuous music. Uh, of course, the taste tasting music is subjective, but the pain and inconvenience it can cause uh, it isn't, and the extremes it is. Um, yeah, music has been used as a form of torture throughout time uh, and is recognised internationally. The term music torture is sometimes used by critics uh, uh, and the practice of playing loud music or incessant music to prisoners who were besieged. If, uh, some mm -hmm. of us were old enough. Remember the Wacko siege back in 1993? Okay. I'm looking around. Some of you weren't born then, never mind. OK, uh, but the United Nations and European Courts of Human Rights have banned it. A band of that type of, uh, of of noise nuisance. Now, we're not talking about the Rebecca Hulk case where she was playing James Blunt incessantly for 24 hours. You know, uh, you're beautiful, which which absolutely drove her neighbours mad. This is uh, the continuous beat uh, of of dance music. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I'll, if you can imagine this, if you're in your back garden on a Sunday afternoon, birds are singing, somebody's got a radio on. It might not be loud. It might not be, you know, but it's just disturbing your 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 peace and tranquility. Or you pass you on a beach and somebody sits next to you with a radio. It's not going to be loud. It might not be excessive, but it is ever so annoying, mm -hmm. and it becomes expected to the brain. Now, Miss Brinkworth is waking at five, twenty past five, twenty five past five every morning, waiting for the music to start. Or the music has started, then wakes her up. Because can, can I confirm what what time is the gym supposed to be open at the moment? Um, is it seven? I believe. Is sorry, it? I'm not on the wrong page. Yet. Oh, I was wondering, Christo. Uh, Chris. What yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, the the application was brought to committee due to um, and brought to our attention due to the breach of the conditions. I believe yeah. it is seven o'clock. So they. That well, these are one. Of, this is one of the reasons, obviously, why they're trying to regularise the issue in terms of uh, the noise. You know, because since lockdown has ended, uh, it opens at six, and but the music starts at twenty past five, twenty five past five every morning. Okay, so um, now it, it's considerably to be at a reasonable level, but to who? I mean, you know, I got a backache. The doctor can't see it. He doesn't know how hard the pain is on my back, but I've got a backache. And I said, I'm telling you, I've got a backache. He can't disagree with me. And I, we can't reasonably tell Miss Brinkworth that it's not, you know, it's not too loud because her perception of it is loud. It's disturbing her, uh, her um, tranquility, if you like. She's got a caravan where she sits with her cats to provide a quiet haven, which is in the curtilage of her property. Uh, and, you know, through that time, she can hear this constant, she refers, it's the, it's the bass beat of the of the, of the, uh, the dance music. She refers to it in her letters as the boom, boom. Uh, yeah. I don't think she's, you know, but anyway. But it, 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 it becomes a continuing nuisance. It's driving her crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think there was reference in the report to the pet store and uh, other large buildings. Well, the pet store, I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's, this has not happened yet, but there will be f quite big developments there within that pet store. I've had uh, people, residents complain or, and certainly make reference to it as they walk past the canal site. We spent a lot of money refurbished to the canal walker, which was come a uh, even on Sundays and Saturdays and through the week. And they can hear this constant beat music playing. They can be heard in Cavickston Road, which is further than Miss Bigwood's house uh, by the college there. I mean, it's a sort of uh, clear clear path to that. Um, so, I mean, 
you know, the, the regulations where they sh shouldn't be open till seven are already being constantly broken. He's paid, the, the, the owner's paid no uh, heed to the rec recommendations and the, and the action conditions been put on it by this planning committee. I've got no reason to believe he's going to, uh, you know, work within those conditions in the future. Um, and uh, as is referenced in, in the report, when the summer comes and it's very hot, you know, they, they're going to have the windows open, they're going to have the doors open, they, they'd have to. It's a, it's becomes like a, a tin hothouse, you know. I mean, the building was was uh, like, uh, designated as, as unsuitable right at the very beginning. Uh, and it, it's acoustically, it's a nightmare for them. I, I, they cannot, there's no way they're going to be able to afford to soundproof that building suitably. Now, I welcome the use of the limiter. I think that's a, a brilliant idea. In fact, I suggested it to, to Megan, who, who's the planning officer, uh, and I'm glad that's been put into place. But uh, I think, you know, it, it's becoming an, an unbearable nuisance for, all right, it, Miss Brick was there, and it's, she's the only one who's living in within that vicinity, but the church complain, or they've made reference to it, the two churches there, uh, as I say, and people who are passing by have also complained. Uh, I don't know why they don't use Bluetooth headsets, you know, the wireless headsets, which is, becomes like a silent disc of them, uh, like other gymnasiums where they've got similar problems with noise. So there, there are other steps they could take, but, uh, you know, I'd like the, the committee to really consider this and stick to the no amplified music policy, because whatever we've done and you know, in all fairness, I think planning and the officers have gone out of their way to try to mitigate this problem. Uh, it doesn't seem to be uh, making a difference. So thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Lockyer. Yes, um, I have uh, Chris Davis indicating, but I also have uh, Leah Morgan present in, in the meeting who's from Environmental Health. So um, I will go first back to Chris Davis and hear what he has to say. And then I will like to have um, the opinion of Leah Morgan from the Environmental Health as well. So Chris, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, and I, I understand where the council is coming from, and we obviously are trying to address the issues from the um, objector in relation to these matters. I think it's it's important to realise the difference between obviously a statutory noise nuisance, which I think the councillor was referring to in terms of cases that we've had previously. Mm -hmm. um, environmental health have been out there on numerous occasions and have, have consistently not found there to be a statutory noise nuisance from the property. Um, there, we we. Uh, in terms of planning, we have a, a, a different standard that we look at, and obviously the policy doesn't require there to be a, a statutory noise nuisance issue. This is about an amenity issue, and it's about protecting the amenity of, of adjoining residents. And obviously the nearest noise sensitive property um, is this property, but we also have to have consideration where it is a edge of town centre location with the other commercial uses in the area. There are other industrial uses with, um, as the councillor pointed out, there's commercial industrial uses going on in the area. There's um, a rugby club nearby. So it's not an area where it's predominantly all residential, but this is introducing sort of a use that would be completely out of the question in this area. Um, but we have to obviously have an eye on protecting residential amenity. Now, in terms of the noise, um, I think as as we've stated in terms of the hours, um, the hours of operation, if you look at condition two, we've also um, ensured that they can't play music outside of those hours. So whereas, as you say, perhaps they were opening at six, but turning up at half past five and putting the music on, these conditions tidy all that up in terms of restricting it to make sure that the music can't be played until the actual opening of the gym. Um, but in terms of the impact, all of the all of the assessment that's been made and the conditions being put in place, including the restriction and the level, are to address the impacts from the property concerned. So there will be noise that will be heard outside the property when you're closer to the property. Um, however, that's in the context of the surrounding commercial and industrial activity in that area. But in but we're quite confident in terms of the assessment that's been made by Environment Health, and they think that the conditions that are imposed are. Um, enforceable and they can deal with any further complaints in relation to those conditions. But in terms of the technicality of it, I'd like to bring in Leah, who can um, from Environment Health, who's been actually on the ground dealing with this matter, um, wrestling with it, should we say, over a number of years. So if I can bring Leah in and perhaps yes, she can give I you a little bit more on the technical side. 
totally agree with you. We, we, I'm sure the committee would love to hear from Leah, who has been dealing with this noise issue on an ongoing basis, and it is actually the reason that it's here today. So, Leah, if you could um, inform committee of the, uh, briefly of the of the history and why you're, of your involvement, please. Yes, of course, Chair. Thank you. Um, so the the com we've we've received complaints about the gym in the past, as Chris has said, which we've we have not substantiated substantiated as a statutory nuisance. Um, but Megan, who is on the has been out and assessed noise and and previously deemed that there there was an amenity issue and that the music was too loud. So the levels that have been agreed upon are levels that are not audible at <clears throat> Miss Brinkworth's property, and that is at the boundary, not inside. That is at the boundary at the outside of the property. So both myself and Megan have stood at the boundary, and the levels that have been agreed, we have said we cannot hear music, we cannot hear bass, we cannot hear anything on the outside boundary of the residence property but what we're doing as a further belt and braces on this um, is that we we've rec recommended a condition that will require that another monitoring exercise is carried out at a sensitive time so the early morning opening times at the weekend and that will demonstrate by way of noise monitoring that the that the this the noise does not exist. So the noise is not measurable, not just that it is not audible by the human ear, but it is not picked up on a noise monitor. So therefore it does not exist at the boundary of the property. If that's not the case, we will reset those levels and we will complete that monitoring exercise again until we reach a point that the noise is not measurable at the nearest residential property. So it, it's, um, I, I myself have been there I could not hear it and I can assure you don't have any hearing issues. It's, you know, I, I couldn't hear anything outside the property, but we will be demonstrating that by a further monitoring exercise as well to reassure Ms Brinkworth that the noise is not there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leah. If you could just be on standby, just in case any members of, course, of the committee Chair. have further questions. Uh, Councillor Steve Hunt, please. Chair, do you want to go to your vice chair first? Uh, I see Sean is on the well, on, on, on mine, it, it was you first, so I, I'll oh, come back. I'm sure you'll understand. I'm sure you'll understand. So, there we are. That's okay. I just wondered if he was picking up on something else. That's fine. Um, can I just congratulate Chris also on his uh, new appointment? Uh, I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job because he's a very experienced officer. Um, and uh, can I thank all the planning officers? This, this particular application uh, has been a challenging one for everybody and for you, Chair, uh, <laughs> as you would be very well know. Now, put in front of us today is uh, the, the excellent work as we continue to emphasise how officers at this Neath Talbot uh, Authority, especially in planning, it's one of the most difficult sort of challenging uh, operational committees that you'll ever have. And, uh, you know, and it's not easy, uh, uh, but the professionalism shown and the report that's in front of us today is, is, is an excellent report in dealing with and supporting. We must remember that employment at this site is very key. The applicant has gone through very difficult times themselves uh, through the coronavirus uh, and the planning committee, uh, sorry, planning officers, certainly would not let them get away with anything. And uh, the local member is quite right uh, that they have, uh, whether deliberately, intentionally or otherwise, uh, uh, broken rules. And I think they would admit to that. Uh, but they decided to work with officers to get yeah. to where we are today. And I'm pleased to see that because it is important. And that lady does need to have the protection for her uh, benefit as being one of the only residents. But I would point out as well, I, I'm not sure if the town council, apart from the late uh, uh, objection today, has previously consistently put in objections to the planning committee in reference to this particular site. Um, and, and I would ask Chris or Kerry or anybody, uh, the actual numbers of complaints given so was is there another bodies working from that locality have they uh, brought in substantial complaints what i'm getting at is while we protect uh, and rightly so and, and take everybody very seriously it's it, it's it hasn't been a, a substantial 
uh, issue of noise levels. Uh, and I think Chris touched on it, Chair. I think what it was, I don't think they had part of the original planning application to have music there. It mm. was if they put the music in when they operated. And I think that's where the planning side came in to regulate that. And as you heard from the environmental uh, nuisance team with, uh, with, with noise levels, the, the, the noise levels were not above the, the levels that were not acceptable. But so I am pleased to see what we have here today, very much so. And I, and I have huge respect for our officers. And you, Chair, you've, you've always said we, we've got the best in Wales. And I, and I agree with you. Uh, we have got the best in Wales. They let nobody get away with anything. Certainly, Chris. Um, my, me and Chris have had a number of uh, disagreements, uh, uh, and he put me right in his uh, excellent capacity as, as an officer. But it's important to help and support businesses like we see in, in front of us today so that they may continue and to employ going forward. So I welcome the report today, and I'm happy to propose it at the appropriate time for okay. approval as recommended as recommended by the officers today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. And uh, I do agree with you that sometimes when um, when people are misbehaving, so to speak, and not obeying the rules, that an application with strict conditions can actually assist the people. The process is working. Environmental Health have brought this here today and co committee members are deciding it. So. Yes, the process does work if we do get the complaints in, and I'm sure that um, environmental health would be able to confirm about complaints. But I, I do see that Chris Davis r raised his hand, and I know that Sean is willing, waiting in the wings. Uh, but Chris, could, do you want to come back in on that point? Yes, it, uh, thank you, Chair. It was it was only just to reiterate, obviously, um, planning um, considers all all aspects yes. um, and impacts notwithstanding how many objections we get or from how many people obviously one one objection is just as valuable as a hundred objections um, but just to reiterate we you know whilst we may have had calls um, over the preceding years in terms of the application we've only received um, objections from a single property right. um, and as I say, it's um, but we are here not just to address that. The 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 impacts of this application will not just benefit obviously the objector, but will build a benefit the wider area and put more controls over the property to address issues that have come up over the last preceding couple of years. But in you know, just to reiterate, even if it was just one objection from one person, we take it as seriously as we would a hundred. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. I can see nods uh, from committee members there. So, um, Sean, you've been very patient, uh, Vice Chair. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I, it was just a comment, really, to be honest, in terms of um, the work that's been done in, in, in yeah. pulling the conditions together around noise. Um, you know, we often use the phrase robust conditions in this uh, committee, but I think, you know, what's been proposed today is 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 very robust. There's, there's even that verification process, which I think yeah. gives us all a bit more comfort that we're not just talking theoretical here. We're actually going to check and make sure that that it does work in practice. And I, and I think the reassurance Lee has given that it's not audible at the boundary. That property is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, given given that reassurance and that comfort, you know, I've got no concerns about this from that residential amenity point of view. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I did mention, I think, in pre-briefing, you know, it is audible from the yeah. canal. Um, however, it, it is an industrialised section of the canal. You know, there's a timber yard there. There's a lot of activity going on in that section of the canal. So it's not a particularly tranquil spot um, anyway. Um, so I think given the reassurances that it won't be audible from that particular property, then, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy um, uh, with what's being proposed today. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. And yes, indeed, you did mention that in pre-brief. And it's sometimes um, good to mention that, you know, we, we've had the pre-brief and we did think of these things because if we don't mention it, people may think you didn't even think about them in the first place. Well, you did, um, quite rightly so. Um, so, Councillor Meisen, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, just um, a quick question to Leah. Um, hi, Leah. Nice to see you again. Um, the, the, the further monitoring exercise, will that be taken with a prior knowledge of the gym 
or it'll be done without them knowing because you know we're getting that you don't know Good they have a propensity to play it loud they whoop hang about we're going to visit come in we'll turn it down a bit <laughs> Yeah, good question. Yeah. Leah? It, it will be done with the knowledge of the gym because we will need to go in and make sure that the um, the stereo is set at the limit at the levels that have been agreed so we can monitor them and measure them at the residential mm -hmm. property and that the, the limiter will be what will stop them turning the music up and down. The limiter will mean that they cannot turn it above the agreed volume. That will be secured in place, sealed in front of myself or a colleague um, and can't be tampered with by anyone there so it it's that sort of belt and braces afterwards <laughs> yeah. to say they they won't be able to fiddle with it once it's all been agreed and approved and we are absolutely convinced that these noise levels cannot be measured uh, i'm going to use the term measured because it, it it does go above and beyond the audible um uh, test that we would normally apply to a statutory nuisance so it it will be done with their knowledge but for the purpose that we are trying to achieve Okay. Thanks, Leah. Thanks very yeah. much. You're okay, that councillor Myson. Fine. Yeah. Um, I'm. I will go back to the local member now, councillor uh, Alan Locke here, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. I was just um, and thank you, Chris, for uh, emphasising that the the, you know, the procedures is is for all. Uh, if it's one or many, and I appreciate that. Uh, Leah, just wondered. You know the the um, meter readings or the readings you've got on page. I think it was 35 or whatever it was, uh, 25. Um, uh, it refers to sort of 77, 74, 69. And, and then I assume the four and five is the control level, is it? Or the, you know, is yeah. so what, what, what does that represent in sort of decibels? The, the, the numbers, the 77, um, that, that is decibels. And what that does, that is, um, that is agreed numbers that we can so myself to verify that they are playing it at the correct level at the correct time i can go in with a noise monitor stand at the agreed locations check the levels and i'll be able to do a spot check immediately to say you, you're you're either complying or you're not um so it, it will be it will enable us to do quite quick enforcement if if we have concerns that the levels have in, increased yeah oh good um, i mean I, I also referred to the rugby club being close by, and that's that's true enough. I mean, uh, Miss Bingham has been a resident there all her life, right? The industrial area has maybe grown around her, and she's never complained about the rugby club. I mean, the rugby club, when it's in full operation of COVID, every sort of Friday, Saturday night has regular discotheques and what have you, but that doesn't affect her because it, the, the noise isn't coming through to her property. Um, the industrial noises that comes to Percy referred to uh, in terms of the wood wood yard etc i mean i think they've become part and parcel of an everyday noise it's it's the continuous thump thump you know it's that bass beat coming through all the time and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm afraid for for the poor unit nine you, you stick a bass beat in a, in a tin shed like that and, and it's going to amplify it and make it far worse than anything else so even though it's, it's got to be perceived uh leah in terms of uh, as you say not to be heard because it's, it's it's like you know i mean it's like, i think it was uh uh, I'm not sure. It was, I'm not going to say a country, but the dripping tap, you know, on someone's head. You know, uh, eventually you think there's it's bricks falling on your head, not just a drip of water, but uh, you know it can be that that bad. Uh, and our health and well-being has suffered. You know, um, if there were other problems with noise or whatever going on, I, I think as we know in the past, I think Miss Brinkworth would have certainly complained. Uh, because um, you know she's not adverse to to letting us know when things are not going uh, uh, appropriately. But uh, in this particular instance, it's the amplified music that's that's causing uh, immense, uh, as she says, uh, damage and uh, uh, stress on our mental health and well-being. And and that's where we're coming from, really. So, uh, but you know, as I say, they've not, as as Councillor Hunt quite rightly said, that you know they're not adhered to any conditions you put on so far because they've been opening since six right from straight after lockdown so if they weren't supposed to open to seven you know that that's already she's already had that much uh pain if you like and torture i mean it i think it's unacceptable to be honest it happens five in the morning to, be, to have a disco going on i think our our own welsh government regulations state that the the sort of music should be or noise should be kept between the hours of of seven and eleven isn't it seven a.m to eleven p.m 
and they're already starting an hour early. So I, I'd like the committee to consider that before they they, they sort of allow the amplified music uh, to be played. Yeah. And, and again, thank you, Chair, for the, allowing me to visit you today. Uh, it's been, been nice, nice to, to have you. Yes. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, um, everybody's had their um, say and questions on this now. So as per um, the offer earlier on, Sorry, I'm on paper, so I'm, uh, the recommendations are on page 36 of this report with the conditions laid out afterwards. May I have someone, I think, Councillor Hunt, you offered to propose? Yes, Chair, with, 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 I would like to propose the recommendation with all the conditions entailed in the report yep. for approval today. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a second? Oh, Mr. Shaw, legal Madam officer. Chair, yes, Madam Chair, my apologies and for, forgive me for taking time to, to raise my hand. Uh, given what uh, colleagues have heard, the two officers present, Chris and Leah, mm -hmm. um, would your view change in respect of the recommendation uh, made? You've heard from, of course, Councillor Lockyer, but you've also heard from Councillor Hunt uh, as well. So, two officers, has it made any uh, change to your opinions? Councillor Davis, um, well, not Councillor, I've demoted you there. Uh, Chris <laughs> Davis and Liam Morgan, uh, if you could answer that. Uh, no, I, I think that we've, um, we've we, as you said, we've got, we've got a, a suite of conditions there that I think will, will address the concern and, and for um, assurances uh, to Councillor Lockyer, I think that um, it also gives us very swift enforcement powers if it's not being adhered to so i think and and, um, and that would in terms of planning we're able to deal with that fairly quickly then if if this is a breach going forward after this date thank you mr davis uh Ms. morgan uh, yeah i agree with um chris chair we've got a robust noise management plan in place now which we didn't have previously um we've got conditions that we have done absolutely everything to make sure are quickly enforceable to prevent any any longer term sort of disturbance okay. um, and I'm, I'm quite happy that we've got a robust way forward for this. Thank you, thank you very much and of course as always uh, planning committee members you do have recommendations but you are here to make up your own minds bearing in, in, in it, taking on board those professional um, recommendations so um, I have had a proposer um, did I have a second I'm sorry I got waylaid there did somebody second I move, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Keogh. Tammy, then, please, would you take the voting members uh, through a roll call again, asking if they've been present and which way they would like to vote? Certainly, Chair, and also just to bear in mind that Councillor Chris Williams stepped out for this item due to his declaration. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Steve Hunt has declared a personal interest, but has decided he can speak and vote on the matter. Thank you, Chair. So have you been present for the whole item and how do you wish to vote? I have been present throughout and I wish to vote with the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Same question to Councillor Sean Percy, Vice Chair. I've been present for the whole item, Sammy, and I'll be voting for the recommendation. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Steve Hunt. I have been here for the whole agenda item, Tammy and I'll be voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Arwen Mulcock. Yes, Chair, confirmed that I've been present for the whole agenda item, voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Susan Renkes. I've been present for the whole item and I'm voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Dennis Keogh. I can confirm I've been here for the entire item and I shall be voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Ridian Maison. Uh, I can confirm I've been present for the whole item, Tommy, and I will be voting for the recommendation. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Chris James, please. Yeah, I've been present for the whole item, Tommy, and I'm voting for the recommendation. Thank you. That application has been approved unanimously, Chair. Thank you, Tommy. OK. On that basis, then I shall move along to item seven, which is matters for information of the delegated decisions between the 6th of February and the 27th of February 2022, found on pages 39 to 48. Um, that's just for information. Um, 
Anybody want to say anything there? No. OK, uh, number eight is urgent items. I have not been informed of any urgent items. So that being said, I would like to thank everybody um, who's contributed to the meeting today and our speakers and visiting members and to congratulate Chris on his very first uh, presentation. We don't bite, do we? <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, so that being said, I would like to close the meeting and um see you next time thank you thank you thank you bye bye thank you, thank you. Um, all, all the best everybody yeah bye bye, bye, -bye. Um.